As the annals of history reveal, a sinister force is reborn once every 100 years. Born from those who seek to fuel the evil that resides within us. It's September 2021, and I can't believe I'm going to get a chance to talk about Castlevania. I'm one of those folks who played the original game way back in 1996 on the NES and just fell in love with it. Ever since, I've played every game in the series, every chance I've had. The last official Castlevania game to be released was Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2 back in 2014, which is really sad when you think about it. It's already been seven years since a new Castlevania game has been released. And sure, we've had the Anniversary Collection, but we haven't had a new entry in the series in ages. Well, enter Castlevania Grimoire of Souls, which was originally released in very limited regions back in 2019. Interestingly enough, Canada being one of those regions, so I have played this before. And I think it lasted around a year or so before it was delisted and all of us thought it was gone for good. As a gacha game, meaning a game that incentivizes players to use real-world money in order to purchase some in-game goodies, usually random items, Grimoire of Souls was actually not too bad. When I first played it, I was surprised by just how much you could actually do without ever having to spend a dime on the game. And I actually think that probably is why it got delisted so quickly, is I just think everyone realized the same thing, that you could play the bulk of the game without having to spend a cent on it. So Konami left the video game industry a couple of years ago now. It feels like it's been 20 years, but it's been a few years now that they really started to transition to pachinko machines, sort of like what the old SNK did. And I like to joke to people, I'm like, the minute Konami left the video game industry to focus on pachinko machines, it seems like that was the time SNK came back into the video game industry. It's almost like these two companies can't coexist in the gaming industry. It's really, really weird. Anyway, here we are in September 2021, and Castlevania Grimoire of Souls has been resurrected for the Apple Arcade subscription service. At first glance, it would appear the game is identical to the original 2019 release, but that's actually not accurate. Some work actually went into this game to rebalance it and change a few things here and there, since Apple Arcade doesn't allow for gacha games. In other words, you can't use real-world money to purchase additional items for any of the games in the Apple Arcade service. The idea is that you pay the monthly subscription and then you get access to these full games. Grimoire of Souls takes place after the events of Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow on the Nintendo DS. Genya Arikado, who was introduced in that game, and who is actually Alucard in disguise, receives a letter in the mail many years after the events of Dawn of Sorrow. The letter begged for Arikado's help as darkness has once again started to spread across the land. Arikado knew that Castlevania, the cursed castle of Dracula, was still sealed away, so what could be the meaning of this, this weird darkness that's suddenly coming back? His gut tells him something's going on and I gotta look into this. And that's pretty much how the game begins. When Arikado finds the person who sent the letter, Lucy's her name, he realizes what's going on. Essentially, a series of magic books are all exhibiting this weird dark energy. And only Arikado can venture into the books and rewrite past histories gone away. And this is how previous heroes such as Simon Belmont join the fray, as Arikado will need all the help he can get if he's going to put everything back to normal. And I actually like that. I think that's kind of a, a good sort of set piece for this type of like greatest hits of Castlevania heroes. Now the first thing I need to say about the gameplay is that this is not Metroidvania. So don't expect a sprawling castle filled to the brim with secrets for you to find. No, what you're given here is little vignettes 
that sort of cover the entire Castlevania series. You'll have interior and exterior scenes, but usually the action is over in around three minutes, and there are actually challenges that push you to complete stages in under three minutes. So don't expect these, you know, massive, giant set pieces, because you're really only going to get these small little scenes. You also have access to a series of sub-weapons, but instead of acquiring new ones in the levels themselves, you essentially create a loadout prior to entering any of the stages. You can also upgrade your core powers over time with a variety of items you locate in the stages. One thing you'll note right away is the sheer amount of grinding you have to do. And yes, you will certainly be grinding the stages over and over and over and over again because everything you do requires a certain number of gems or parchments or other items that you get as rewards for completing the levels. You can summon an item once per day for free, otherwise they cost 3,000 gems for 10 summons or 300 for one. Now you're only guaranteed a 4 star item if you perform a 10 summons. Although it's weird because in the original 2019 release it actually noted that, it actually told you that, but that has been edited out this time around, but from what I've actually played it still holds true. Gems are acquired by completing stages, challenges, and pretty much everything else you do in the game. Now I don't recall if the simple search feature existed in the original game, but in this updated version you can perform 20 simple searches a day, which essentially look through all the different stages for items that you need. So for example, let's say I wanted to update one piece of uh, armor or something like that. I'd be able to say like, oh I need these three particular parchments. You could select those three and then say, go ahead and find them for me, and it'll search all the levels for you and then find the items you need. But you can only do that 20 times a day, but it does bring the grinding down significantly, which is huge. So I'm pretty sure that's a new addition, but I could be wrong. And talking about upgrades, you can not only enhance your primary weapon, and you'll want to keep quite a few of these handy, as there's elemental bonuses awarded for fire, holy, dark, etc. But this is just an excuse to keep you going uh, and grinding more and more in order to get all the different items. But anyways, you can also upgrade your armor, sub-weapons, etc. But again, all of these require these special items. The upgrade system works identically between all of the different items. So it's not like it's something new for your primary weapon or your pair of boots, like it's the exact same system. There is something called a limit break, which unlocks additional levels and enchantments to your particular items. So that's important to remember. It's a lot to wrap your head around at first, but it's truly not bad once you, uh, once you get into it and you get the rotation down, I think it'll be fine. And I haven't mentioned this yet, but yes, you can indeed use a controller to play the game. I'm using my trusty Xbox controller, but whatever tickles your fancy will work. You can't use the D-pad unfortunately, so you gotta use the analog stick, but it's certainly more enjoyable than using the touch controls, or at least it is in my case. I, I'm not a big fan of touch controls. There is an auto attack mode, which you can see sometimes activated in the uh, video, because it, it took me a while to realize you had to click in the right stick to close it down. I didn't, I didn't realize that. So when you're ready to tackle the various stages, you enter the game's main quest hub, and this is where you'll select where you want to go. In the game hub, the main game hub, where you'll see the quests and other things, there's a whole variety of different areas, one to change your playable character, listen to music, uh, a gallery that's unlocked, and then there's all kinds of challenge areas, shops, etc. And you'll unlock more and more features as you progress in the game. Not only do you unlock these features, but each stage will also challenge you to three specific targets per stage. And if you can unlock these particular challenges per stage, you'll notice that new stages will unlock. So eventually you'll end up with all these different paths that you can take, and the stages can get harder and harder the more challenges that you unlock. So the idea is that you'll get better and better gear. That's the idea. You can also change the game's difficulty, but it's really level based. So in other words, let's say you start off and you're like level five, you'll notice that there's a certain points that are allocated to your, your character. It's basically experience. So let's say Simon Belmont had, I don't know, 5,000 experience total. 
and the the stage is for like say 4200 you're not going to really have any any issue but if you increase the difficulty it could go from 4200 to say 50,000 and then all of a sudden your 5000 exp character is extremely weak and when he goes and like hits say like a skeleton he'll be taking like one hp off and the skeleton might have 20 million hp but overall i think the the difficulty is just about right especially as you start to progress in the game i did find some of the boss characters like the the bat that i'll show you in the video here is is just a little excessive i find they're they're a little bit like spongy if you know what i mean where you can just hit them over and over and over again and they just take forever to uh to go down but overall i i didn't find the game like hard per se especially it's really hard because you can't you know you just get into the the gist of the game and then all of a sudden it's it's done because the stages are so small only a couple of minutes to complete them that I found myself sort of like cooling off before I would jump back into the next level, which was a little unfortunate. But in the end, listen guys, this is a Castlevania game. It's, yes, a little bit different than, you know, you were probably hoping, but it is a Castlevania game. And you know the saying, beggars can't be choosers. Well, that's us right now. We're begging Konami to release a new Castlevania game. I know a lot of you would like one in the vein of Symphony of the Night, or maybe as a, as, as a game similar to Rondo of Blood, but it's 2021, we have a new Castlevania game, it might not be exactly what everyone wants, but it exists. And I know, I know that seems kind of ridiculous, that like I'm basically praising it because it exists, but it does, and, and I am. It's great to hear, you know, Bloody Tears, Simon's theme, and all the other music. It, like, it, it, it's Castlevania, right? I mean, take a look at this. The graphics look nice, too. It runs fairly well. It's, it's Castlevania. It's just, it's Castlevania on a mobile subscription service. And it plays like a mobile game. So it's not exactly what the hardcore fans, especially on this channel, are hoping for. But listen, again, it exists. It's a new Castlevania. Well, it's a reworked version of the 2019 Castlevania game on mobile. And I'm really hoping that it does well enough so that Konami can once again take the series a little bit seriously. I doubt it very much, but you know what? I'm hoping. And that's why I played this. That's why I reviewed it because I absolutely love Castlevania as a series. And I want more games, Konami, so please come back to the video game industry. We really miss you.